Hi there and welcome to our Regal DS1052E training series. On the screen here we have a picture of the oscilloscope. It's an uptight shot so you can see the details. When you try to take videos of these screens, the text down here gets blurry and it's very hard to do. So we're not going to use an actual screen during our training courses. We're going to use a virtual screen and I'll show you what that means. Ultrascope is a program that came with the oscilloscope on a CD. It allows you to control the remote the oscilloscope remotely. So you have a function out here called virtual panel. So I'm going to turn it on. And right now we're looking at my actual oscilloscope. My oscilloscope is sitting on the floor over here. And that's what's on the screen of my oscilloscope. It's an exact layout, virtual image. And what it does for us, it gets rid of the fan noise. It also prevents focusing problems. And lighting problems are not an issue anymore. We have a zoom capability here. When we zoom it up, you notice I get a much larger image of the oscilloscope. But the panels changed a little bit. The orientation of the panels moved around. The vertical is here now and horizontal trigger menu on top. That's not important. The important thing is that we can now see a clear image of what's on my actual oscilloscope screen. My scope right now has the... Uh, take a look here. It's not that one. It's this one. It has this probe compensator signal going into channel 1 just like in the picture. This picture is from the... Um, manual came with the oscilloscope. Probe set for 10 to 1. My probe scale is set to 10 to 1 and it's connected like this. And that's the signal we're actually looking at. So that's what we're seeing right here. Once again if we go back look at the actual signals on the scope. Here's the Regal technical manual definition of the standard screen display. Two channel scopes, so the channel one's in yellow, channel two is in blue. And we have various things around here that it talks about and points out. This training course will take you through all these things, explain what they mean and how to use them, how to make them work for you. So we're going to use this virtual screen, but it's really based on my real time oscilloscope. So, for example, Anytime you, get, you start using an oscilloscope, there's a good chance that you'll get a flat line and won't get a signal because your acquisition parameters aren't set up properly. So the scope has a function called auto function. There's an auto button. If you press the auto button, it will automatically set up the parameters. It set up 500 microseconds for the horizontal time base, 500 microvolts per centimeter for the vertical scale. And a signal is easily presented. If it's a real strange signal, it would still find it and present it on your screen. Once you've done this, you can always modify the screen results. You can change the vertical scale, vertical position, horizontal time base, horizontal position, etc. So it gets you started. It gets you pointed in the right direction. The auto button does. I highly recommend you always use the auto button. The next thing we have here is uh, let's do a measurement. The measure button brings up a measure menu. And the measure menu at the bottom says display all measurement parameters. That's the easiest one to use. It's quick and dirty. And we'll click F5. Well, it's my F5 is the same as this button right here. It's a gray button. So there's five gray buttons. And we have five function buttons. So I'm going to press F5. Screen disappeared on me. Came back when I hit F5. So I'm going to display all by pressing F5. And now we got all the measurement parameters of that signal. And the signal is on channel 1 because that's what our source channel is for the measurement function. You could change your source channel to channel 2. But in this case, there'd be nothing because there's no probe connected to channel 2. So always make sure your source channel and your measurement function represents the channel that you wish to measure. So we'll turn this off. Measurement results are turned off now. And we'll click the measurement menu button. That'll clear the measure menu. We can also go to display functions here. 
and we can scroll up or scroll down. F1 to scroll us up. F5 to scroll us down. And you can set all these various parameters if you wish to. So I'm going to kill the display button. Notice a little remote symbol here, RMT. That means that the oscilloscope is in remote control. If you go look at the front panel of my physical oscilloscope, it has an RMT on it. And all the front buttons on my oscilloscope, my physical oscilloscope, won't do anything right now. They're disabled. As long as this program is running, and as long as the USB cable is connected between the scope and my computer, there will be a remote function in the front panel. Knobs on the scope can do nothing. So keep that in mind if you ever use this program. The intent of this lecture is not to teach you how to use the remote functions. The intent of this lesson is to give you good quality video graphics that we can use to explain how to use the oscilloscope. So you have to bear with us on the slight screen differences to get the training points across. Whenever required, we'll bring up a picture of the real scope to make the correlation in case you start losing track of what's what. Our training philosophy is that we learn a little bit at first, use those things we learn, and then add more things as time goes on. So we don't believe in trying to memorize every knob, every function up front because you go crazy and never will learn it and you'll give up. Instead, we believe you should learn a few things, use those few things, learn a few more things, use those things, and continue expanding your knowledge base. So this lesson series will have many lessons. This is just lesson one to get things rolling. And hopefully now you understand what we're doing here with our virtual display. We're actually looking at my physical real oscilloscope in real time. The only difference is a little delay. I click a button, there's about a two second delay before it actually updates. But whatever I click on here does in fact take place on my oscilloscope through the USB cable link. I can do anything here that I could do over there on the front panel. So for that reason this makes a better training environment because now I can bring up pictures and screens such as like I'm doing right here. I can bring up a picture and it's still in the video. I have to switch from video camera or the front screen of the scope back over to the screen capture. I can just do it all in screen capture mode here. I don't have any sound from a fan running. I don't have any focus issues. So it really makes everything quite pleasant for a training environment. Having said all that, next we need to find out just what references we're going to use during this course. A course is no good unless you have something you can read about. Details. So we're going to reference two items and the two items are shown in lesson number two. So Good luck and welcome to our training series.